JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 6th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar was found slightly higher against all but two of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday during the Asian session Thursday. It gained the most uh, versus NOC, SEC and the Euro in that order, while it underperformed only against uh, the Kiwi and the Canadian dollar. Despite the relative strength of the US dollar, the strength <coughs> Excuse me, the strengthening of the commodity linked Hiwi and Luni, as well as the fact that uh, the Japanese yen was found uh, nearly unchanged against its uh, US counterpart, suggests that the financial markets may have traded in a risk on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU indices rebounded strongly, marking their best uh, day in nearly, two, in nearly two months. Appetite softened somewhat during the US session, with Nasdaq sliding 0.37%, the S&P 500 uh, gaining only 0.07%, but the Dow Jones rising 0.29% and hitting a fresh record high. This suggests uh, that market participants may have turned back uh, to cyclically, ori to cyclically oriented uh, sectors as hopes uh, of uh, global economies reopening may have returned. Today in Asia, although China's Shanghai Composite gained only 0.14%, Japan's Nikkei 225 rallied 1.82%. On Tuesday, stock indices tumbled following uh, comments by U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen that interest rates may have to rise somewhat to make sure that the economy does not overheat. However, yesterday, several Fed officials clearly suggested, suggested that they are in no rush of uh, normalizing uh, monetary policy. Chicago Fed President Charles Evans clearly stated that he expects monetary policy to stay super easy for some time while uh, Boston President Eric Rosengreck said that inflation pressures will be short-lived uh, and should not uh, lead to a pullback in, uh, in, uh, in monetary policy. Last but not least, Cleveland's uh, Loretta Messer said that uh, more progress in the job market is needed before the conditions for reducing support are met. All this uh, is in line with our view that market participants may continue to add to their risk, to their risk exposures. Data suggesting that the, that the global economy is recovering from the, from the pandemic at a decent pace, a progress in the vaccination rollout programs, the Fed's extra loose monetary policy, and US President Biden's willingness to proceed with more fiscal support are a blend of developments suggesting that stock indices may continue trending north. Risk-linked uh, currencies like the Aussie, the Kiwi and the Luni may benefit as well, while the US dollar and other safe havens like the yen may come under renewed selling interest. Speaking about currencies, unlike the Kiwi and the Luni, the Aussie failed to outperform its uh, US counterpart. It was doing so during the whole day yesterday, but overnight it tumbled as uh, China said it plans to suspend uh, indefinitely all activities under the China-Australia Strategic Economic Dialogue Mechanism, escalating strains due to Australia acting on China's persistent human rights uh, human right abuses. In any case, the currency is now recovering those losses, suggesting that it could still be positively affected by further improvement in the broader market sentiment. Now, as for today, the main event may be the Bank of England monetary policy decision. Back in March, British uh, policymakers kept their policy unchanged and noted uh, 
that the recent plans for easing of COVID-related restrictions may be consistent with a slightly stronger outlook for, for consumption growth. However, they repeated that the outlook for the economy remains unusually assessed and that if the inflation outlook weakens, they stand ready to take the necessary action. Since then, the UK economy has been recovering from the coronavirus uh, recession faster than expected as the vaccine rollout continues and uh, market chatter suggests that officials are likely to scale back uh, the pace of their bond purchases at this gathering. If so, the pound could gain on uh, such a de uh, could gain on such, on such a decision. But pound traders are, are also likely to pay attention um, to the to the new economic projections, where upside revisions are likely to encourage them to add to their long positions. The big uh, risk today is for policymakers to postpone their decision to slow down their bond purchases, something that could disappoint participants and result in a sliding pound. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, besides the Bank of England monetary policy decision, the other releases worth mentioning are Eurozone's retail sales for March, the US initial jobless claims for last week, and uh, excuse me, the US initial jobless claims for last week. Eurozone's retail sales are expected to have uh, slowed to 1.5% uh, month over month from 3%, while the US uh, jobless claims are forecast to have declined slightly to 540,000 from 553,000. Tonight, during the Asian session Friday, China's trade balance for April is due to be released and expectations are for the nation's uh, trade surplus to have increased to $28.10 billion from $13.8 billion. As for the speakers, we have uh, five on today's agenda, and those are ECMB President Christine Lagarde, ECMB Executive Board, mem board Member Isabel Schnabel, New York Fed President John Williams, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic, and Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester. During the, Asian and during the Asian session tomorrow, we will get to hear from Dallas Fed President Robert, Ka Robert Kaplan as well. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning uh, about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Out webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.